So, we finally have a release date for the Alpha of Elite Dangerous Odyssey. This is coming on the 29th of March. What's more, Frontier have also released new footage of the update, this time showing a full playthrough of a mission, so there's plenty of new information to take a look at. You can see the new footage playing in the background right here, so I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, and also raise a whole load of points about what we're seeing. I've also got a few additional pieces of information that, that may answer a few questions. Now, a brief point on access to Alpha. This will be available to everyone on PC who pre-ordered the edition that, that came with Alpha access. At the moment, there's no word on how long the Alpha will last, but it's possible that information will be available on that after this video is released. I'll also have another video releasing within the next few hours containing some additional information, so do keep an eye out for that. Now, onto the new footage. This has been taken from a pre-alpha build, so Frontier have been pretty keen to say that what we are seeing will have some improvements, and not everything we are seeing is in its final form. The video covers a raid on a settlement called Dutch Munitions. The team of players' goal is to get into the base and successfully steal the power regulator. The mission opens with a ship flying over one of the new planets, over uh, one of the new planets that has a thin atmosphere. The ship is carrying three players, that's the pilot plus the passengers, and the passengers are physically on board the ship, and although the video doesn't show it, they will be sitting in the multi-crew seats in the cockpit. In this case, the pilot stayed on board and the two other players entered the base. So, stepping back a, a few minutes here just to have a look at something else, one of the things that really stood out to me was that on the approach, it was a noticeable, usable landing pad, and you could even see that the player had made a docking request, which was accepted. And this suggests that this base is actually potentially friendly to players. In this case, though, the landing pad wasn't used. There's no warning, it appears, for parking close to the base, and I couldn't see any turrets defending the base. Whilst we're on the subject of ship landings, actually, is some very interesting point here. Ships will now be able to automatically land on planetary surfaces, so this just isn't just auto-docking on landing pads, but landing on any suitable area. But back to the mission at hand, the ship landed outside the base. There are a few skimmers around however, and some of them are the much more powerful Goliath variants. None of them however appear to be bothered by the proximity of the ship. This is probably explained by the fact that the player's status is clean, so they aren't wanted by the local authorities. It is mentioned in the video that if the players get seen by the guards, they will be scanned. And the players, for some reason, want to avoid being scanned, but it's not explained why. Either way, that led to some sneaking through the base, which you can see going on right here. The base itself, I feel, looks very nice, and there's plenty going on here. Unfortunately, the players or the uh, community team didn't take the time to stop and actually look at all of this, but understandable because they were on a mission. All of the assets at the base look graphically unified and the buildings blend in well with the service elements. And yet at this point in gaming, uh, that's something that really is a foregone conclusion and you may be wondering why I'd even point it out. So the reason I pointed out is that for Elite, many if not most of the bases are going to be procedurally generated and placed. And this is something that can be challenging for games to fall off, whilst still allowing the final location to actually look natural. Now, as the players run through the base, there's a few things that are worth pointing out here. Firstly, the UI shows the current temperature and gravity. The gravity is 0.49G, that compares to around about 0.16G on the Moon. And despite being half the gravity of Earth, it doesn't appear to be having any real effect on the way the players move around. We can also see the temperature in the UI. This is currently 326 Kelvin, which translates to around 52 degrees Celsius or 125 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a bit warm then. Also notice how the temperature drops as the players move into the shadows. It's nice to see conditional environmental factors at play. Eventually, the players make their way to the power building, which contains the regulator they want to steal. They need to break into the building to gain access, and this is where the various tools Frontier have spoken about in the past actually come into play. The two players have very different equipment. Commander Nesta is equipped for combat, 
wearing an armour and carrying a selection of weapons. Commander Cersei, however, is wearing a lighter suit and is equipped with a selection of tools. Breaking into the base requires cutting into the control panel and then overloading the door controls. Inside the building, the NPC workers seem slow to react. They also aren't armoured or shielded, so can be killed pretty quick. Also notice 800 credit fine for trespassing and a 250 credit fine for murder. It's good to see that the future has its priorities straight. Now, as soon as Commander Cersei starts hacking the system to release the regulator, the base's alarm sound, and this attracts the guards and the shooting begins. The big question I have here is how these missions will work for the lone player. Quite clearly, infiltrating the base, cutting panels and hacking the power unit is best with a light suit and a variety of tools. However, defending against the guards will be better with armour and weapons. This works well with two players, but it might present a difficult choice for the lone player. So, the combat. A huge part of a first-person shooter is, of course, the combat and the shooting. Pretty obvious. For now, Odyssey is clearly in a pre-alpha, and some of the issues I'm going to talk about here might be due to that. Whilst Commander Cersei is waiting for the power regulator to be released, Commander Nestor is doing the bulk of the combat work. So let's start with the AI. On the screen right now, you can see a load of NPCs. They're just standing there, waiting to be shot. A few of them are ducking and dodging, some of them running away, but not one of them is making use of any cover, despite being standing right next to cover that would be more than adequate. In fact, it's quite hard to understand what the AI is really doing here. They seem to be running all over the place. Enemy weapons fire also doesn't appear to be doing significant damage to the players, but that could be for any number of equipment-based reasons. Now, despite those concerns, there's plenty of time to get these things polished. Don't forget, this is still pre-alpha after all, and well, we'll have an opportunity to compare this to the build we finally get on the 29th of March. In terms of sound effects and combat, as always with Elite Dangerous, the audio is pretty reflective of what's going on. Grenade. Now, finally, at the end here, the Goliath has taken note of the players. They seem to be doing remarkably well against the extremely heavy incoming weapons fire. But again, this may well be equipment related. And at the end here, the players have finally managed to get away, board the ship, and make good on their escape. So, some final thoughts on what we've seen today. For those of you with eagle eyes, you'll have noticed a few inconsistencies on the playthrough. Players switching positions, names changing, and a few other such things. In another example, you might have also noticed that the players that should have been boarded onto this ship right here are still standing on the surface when the ship left. This was due to the fact that the video is based on multiple play sessions of the same mission, as well as some multi-crew issues. Personally, I'm totally okay with that and would much rather see a video like this than a dev diary. It gives us a far better indication of what Odyssey will actually be about after all. Moving on, here's some of the things I really like and a few things I feel still need some polish. The planet looked great. It's nice to see the atmosphere. It also had a very nice effect on the appearance of the local sun. The ground textures looked good. Although in some areas, I feel that the cliffs and the jagged terrain still suffers from that clay-looking appearance that Horizon has. But this seemed to depend on the lighting conditions, as in other areas, it looked much better. Overall, I'm really looking forward to exploring various planets with different atmospheric compositions and seeing all the manner of different colour sunsets and planets in Nebula. The bases look interesting, especially as this was only one variant, and we've heard in previous dev diaries there will be more. I'm especially interested to see if it's possible to explore the interior of the buildings there. The mission objective in this video seemed to work well. It looked like a pretty quick get in, get out mission, and I'm all for those if they are one among many. I'm a little less enthused, however, with the weapons. They felt a bit on the light, pew pew side rather than machines of death. More Star Trek, the next generation, less Mass Effect. But we only got to see a very small selection of weapons, so it's far too early to say for sure. The AI definitely needs a lot of work. This isn't a case of the AI being too hard or too easy, and more of a case of the AI just standing around and being a little too random. Although, I really don't see why this can't be fixed. 
Overall then, this is definitely a very different direction for Elite, just as people have expected since the announcement. In the end, this should be a very good thing, just so long as the spaceship segment of the game doesn't get ignored. Whilst FPS isn't for everyone, and likely isn't why uh, many people will actually pick the game up, it's nonetheless an interesting layer added to the game. And as we've now had a good insight into combat, I remain very interested in seeing how exploration and scavenging work for Odyssey. If those have at least some depth, it will really help flesh things out even more. I'll be back very soon with some more information on Odyssey in another video. Meanwhile, do let me know your thoughts on the new Odyssey footage in the comments section. You can also find a link to Frontier's video in the description below.